So this morning we're going to talk about algae and uh, why it's consistently a problem for beginning systems and older systems and what you can do to manage it. Algae is a really, really interesting problem in aquaponic systems because it's an essential part of the ecology. So almost all aquaponic systems are going to have algae. And when we talk about algae, what we're talking about is uh, they're basically little bitty, teeny tiny, itty bitty, you know, plants that are growing and living in your water, floating around in the water. And um, they perform photosynthesis. So they're a lot like plants in, in that they, you know, they're, they need light to survive. They're fixing carbon dioxide and they're producing sugars and these other compounds that they use to divide and uh, to basically grow more of themselves. So um, in aquaponic systems, we don't have big multicellular algae uh, super often. We do get some filamentous algae. So when you have um, kind of long algae strands and you see that kind of growing together, oftentimes that's what that is. But a lot of the algae that we have in our systems is much smaller. So we're talking little itty bitty, um, little itty bitty algae cells and uh, organisms that are kind of just living in our solution. Now this can cause a lot of problems and I know that we've talked about this in previous clips, especially like the ammonia clip and the nitrate clip, but algae are really, really good at taking up your system nutrients and fixing them. So taking up those nutrients from your water and turning them into uh, cells. So they turn them into biomass, algae biomass in your system. That's a bad thing because if your algae is taking it up, your poor little plants, you know, that's my best illustration of a plant at the moment, they don't get any of the nutrition in your solution. Uh, those, algaes, those algae are taking up all that nutrition. So this is something that we need to learn how to control. Now mature systems don't often struggle with algae as much as beginning systems, simply because they're kind of at a steady state. It takes a while for the ecology to build up, but eventually it all balances out. You have organisms that are eating the algae or consuming the algae. You have uh, maybe mechanical elements that are straining the algae out of the water. And um, so it's, it's being removed from the system. And the nutrients that it's gathered up are cycling. So in mature systems, it's not as important. But there are lots and lots of beginner systems that have an algae bloom right off the bat. And that's a bad thing. It's not just taking up nutrients. It's also throwing off the pH. So in the middle of the day, oftentimes the pH will rise when the sun is at its highest, and then at night the pH will drop back down. So people will see what's called diurnal swings in their pH uh, just because you've got a lot of algae in the system. So we need to figure out how to control it. So the first way to take care of algae is shade, okay? Algae needs sh or light to survive, so if you can actually shade your fish tanks, then you basically remove one thing that the algae really need. Um, so this is kind of the first step for almost all aquaponics practitioners, okay? And this is fairly common knowledge. If you're starting a system, it's good to shade your fish tanks. Um, the second thing that we can do to control algae is some kind of filtration, okay? Filtrate, there we go. Filtration. And um, for us, you know, we're using towers. So the fiber in our towers filters those out, that algae out of the water and our red worms are consuming the dead and decomposing algae. It's all part of this big, beautiful, wonderful nutrient cycle that we have. So these are the most common ways of dealing with algae, but there are a few more little tricks uh, that you can do to help control algae in your system. So to start, the, the one that I really love, um, this is the Nate Story secret algae control method, is after you've done these, it's always good to use a little bit of this. Um, now this is something that we do here at Bright Agritech. I'm not sure uh, it's really done elsewhere, but we use humic acid um, to essentially darken our water. And what we do with this is a little goes a long way. These are natural um, acids that are basically uh, in all plant material and decomposing plant material. So what we have here is a concentrated form of that. It's not truly really acidic, so it's not gonna drop the pH of your water that much. Um, especially in the quantities that we add it, because we add very little. But what it does is it causes the water to darken. And I'm going to uh, show you, do a little demonstration of that here real quick to show you kind of how this works. So before I get started with this, let me just uh, tell you that uh, these acids are really common in natural ecosystems. 
and they're really actually pretty darn healthy for uh, lots of uh, lots of marine organisms. So your plants, your fish, everything tends to like these acids, and they also do a good job at chelating um, chelating some some metals and and some plant nutrients. So uh, they're they're useful in the system um, for a lot of different reasons. Too many to really get into here. But the point of it is just to say that this is a natural, very safe, and actually healthy addition for many systems. So what we have here is just some regular aquaponic water. So you can see it already has a slightly tannic color. It's already a little bit yellow. Um, and whether we can see it or not, there's a lot of algae in this water already. Okay, so um, this is just one little grain of this humic acid. I'm just going to drop it in there and, and kind of stir it around here, let it dissolve. And this is just a teeny tiny little bit. But already you can see the water starting to darken. And um, what that's doing then is it's kind of artificially shading, um, shading that water. So if we were to add this to our larger system, as that water darkens, what we're essentially doing is we're limiting the amount of light that gets to the bottom of our fish tank, or the bottom of our sump tank, or the bottom of whatever we're using. So I'll just kind of keep doing this, and uh, you'll see this water darken up quite a bit as the rest of that humic acid dissolves. So um, essentially what we do here is we're not, we're not just kind of supplementing our system with this kind of healthy little amendment for our plants, for our fish, for the other organisms, but we're also causing our water to darken and we're shading out the algae. So we're in the water itself, uh, we're reducing the amount of light available to the algae. And I found that this is a really useful thing, not just for system health, but for keeping your algae blooms to a minimum. Before I move on, I just want to say that you can, uh, we buy ours at Kelp for Less. Um, you can get this a lot of different places, but it's um, really inexpensive. And the thing to remember is that a little goes a long way. For our big 4,000 gallon system, this, uh, you know, this is like a five pound bag, I think, four pound bag. This bag will last us for several years. So you really don't need very much. Um, so that's kind of one of the first little tricks uh, that you can use to reduce algae. And there's some more that I won't really get into at this point. Um, Kind of closing up, the thing to remember is that algae is actually a healthy part of the system. It's really just the beginning, when all of your ecology is working out its kinks, that algae is a problem. So keep that in mind and know that down the road, all of the nutrients that that algae is taking up and storing uh, will be released back into the system. It just kind of causes this big leg in your nutrition. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Nate Story with Bright Agritech. For more information, check out uh, some of our other YouTube videos, subscribe. Check out the Vertical Food blog and, of course, our website uh, where we sell Zipgrow towers, which are great at algae filtration.